you've heard the word caldera before, like the Yellowstone caldera or the Kilauea caldera. For geologists, this term refers to the type of volcanoes and the structure resulting from volcanic activity, and this term is different from the term crater. Crater is a general term that refers to a closed depression in the ground that may have several possible origins, either volcanic or otherwise. By strict definition, a caldera is a type of crater, but calderas are distinguished by their large size and their specific relationship to volcanic collapse. Yellowstone is a caldera. An eruption that occurred 631,000 years ago largely emptied the magma chamber, and the ground collapsed into the resulting void. The Yellowstone caldera is huge at about 70 by 45 kilometers. In volcanology parlance, a small collapse perhaps several hundred meters wide is a crater. However, large collapses generally more than one kilometer. 0.6 miles, wide are calderas. The guidelines are unclear regarding the size of craters and calderas. The point is that the caldera is bigger and the crater is smaller. Craters often form as a result of small evacuations of magma from shallow surfaces, such as the numerous craters scattered across the surface of Kilauea and Hawaii while calderas result from the partial emptying of a volcano's main magma chamber. Craters can also surround the neck of a volcano's when material is ejected during an explosion, such as craters in many volcanic cones. A spectacular example of a caldera is found in Oregon. Mount Mazama was the site of a powerful eruption whose ash covered much of western North America. Mazama's ashes were even found in sediment cores collected from the bottom of Yellowstone Lake. The peak of the Mazama volcanoes collapsed into an empty magma chamber, leaving a large surface depression that eventually filled with rainwater and became what we know today as Crater Lake. Calderas are not always formed from powerful explosive eruptions. Large depressions at the tops of many shield volcanoes, such as those in Hawaii, are also calderas. In fact, in 2018, a large eruption of lava at Kilauea volcanoes partially emptied the magma chamber and caused the summit to collapse, forming a smaller caldera within the larger summit caldera. The collapse did not occur instantly, but rather occurred little by little, with subsidence events occurring separately and punctuated by continuous sinking of the ship. Over the course of about three months, the peak collapsed more than 500 meters, 1,600 feet. For geologists, a caldera can also refer to a style of volcanism, and Yellowstone is a perfect example. Never before has a large volcanic edifice dominated the landscape at Yellowstone. The views of Mount Mazama were unprecedented before the volcanoes collapsed. In contrast, Yellowstone is a volcanic field, with numerous eruptive vents scattered across the landscape, reflecting the large and complex magma reservoirs that lie underground and fuel the eruptions that form the caldera. So Yellowstone is not a stratovolcanoes. This is not a shield volcanoes. Rather, it suggests a style of volcanism that includes rare, large explosive eruptions associated with caldera collapse. Other caldera complexes in the U.S. include Valles in New Mexico and Long Valley in California. Outside the U.S., caldera complexes are characterized by Taupo in New Zealand and Campi Flegre in Italy. This is not an elegant term, but now you know how geologists use the term caldera to describe large craters resulting from collapse into evacuated magma chambers. 
and also a type of volcanoes that does not have a main central vent and has experienced large eruptions in the past.